Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Now it's been months since we've last uploaded to the channel so I wanted to jump in with something really cool and really interesting for you. Now I said a long time ago I would do editing your photos on the channel. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be editing your Instagram photos on Lightroom. Now if you do want to get involved in this series you can go ahead and submit your photos to the email link in the description but you must make sure you submit raw files. Any JPEGs will be ignored, I promise you. We got loads of raw submissions last time and they're great, but all the JPEGs were completely ignored. So if you want to submit, make sure you submit a raw photo. We just cannot and will not edit the JPEG files. So that's not trying to be mean or anything, it's just a lot easier to edit raw files and there's not really much point showing you guys how to edit JPEGs. So if you want to get involved, go ahead and comment down below and like this video, but let's get started. Now, this is the photo we want to start with today. You can see up here, this is just the Instagrammer. Um, their handle up here so you can go ahead and check them out on Instagram as well. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to start with this Zonda photo just because it's my favourite out of all of them. Um, we have some landscapes which we're going to go through. We've also got this landscape which I really love and I'm going to test that out as well in today's video. I don't want to waste your time so we're going to jump in and we're going to get started. Now this photo is taken on a 50mm 1 400th of a second f 1.4 ISO 200 it's for those of you who are interested in the settings. Now First thing I'm going to do is drop those highlights. I want to try and bring out some of the detail here. We are probably going to have to crop in just because I want to get rid of this sky. The highlights are very blown out. Um, I'm going to crop in and just work on the exposure of the image to start off with. I want to bring out the detail in those shadows. Now the idea of this image is I want to go for something that's really contrasty, slightly desaturated and focusing on the car. So the way we're going to do that is just drag up this clarity slider a bit. I don't want to do too much, but I do want to kind of, you know, outline the lines of the car. Now, I'm just working on this dehaze tool because I am interested to see if it sharpens up the image and adds a bit more contrast. Um, sometimes it can really help, um, but I don't want it to look over contrasty because the car is quite dark. There are a lot of shadows in the car. We don't want to lose that detail. So again, I'm going to lift up the, height, the shadows. Maybe drop the clarity a tiny bit, and in fact, I'm going to get rid of the dehaze because it's not really going to help. Right, now comes the fun part. Now, if you stay until the end, I'm going to work on the tone curve, which will really bring out the detail in the car, so stick around for that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the colours. Now, looking around, I want to kind of make it like a warmer orange, so I'm actually going to jump back into the basics, and then we're going to work on each individual colour. So first of all, I like to work on the saturation so we can remove the colours we're not going to be working on and then we can just focus directly on the colours we are going to be working on. So the reds, I'm going to desaturate a bit. We are going to come down to the greens. We're going to desaturate the greens and yellows an awful lot just because I think they take away from the image. The greens and the trees aren't particularly important in the edit I'm going for. I'm kind of going for that really cool grimy edit. Now the blues, there aren't really many blues in this image in fact, so we're just going to leave those alone. Purples and magentas, we're going to desaturate a little bit, and in fact, the oranges, I'm just going to boost those, and the reds, I'm actually going to boost those. Because we're going for that sunset vibe, it is quite important to get those warm colours in, but we don't want to overdo it. Next thing is the hues. So I'm thinking I'm going to drop the reds, it's really only working on the lights here. The oranges are going to be the important one. Now, if we go too low, you can see we're going to make it very pink. If we go too bright, it's going to make it green. So I'm just trying to work out the best position. I think I'm going to actually come back to the basics panel and just remove the uh, the purples from the tint and then we can work on it here. Okay, right, so now we're going to jump down to the luminance sliders. We haven't really done much in the colours just because there aren't really many colours in this image. Um, and then we're going to work on darkening the reds just so those lights stand out a little bit. The oranges, I want to brighten those up ever so slightly just to kind of bring our eyes onto the curves of the car. So you can see we've gone from here to here, brighter image. I think that's probably it. So we'll close up the HSL. Because there aren't many colours in this image, we're now going to work on focusing our attention towards this part of the image. So I'm going to have a go with the gradient slider. Now we've got two choices here. We can either brighten up the sky or we can try and darken the sky. Now I would ideally like to darken the sky, but the problem is the highlights here are blown out. So you might want to crop that out in a bit. So we'll drop the highlights like that. So what I've done there is I've desaturated the sky We've added some haze into the image just to kind of blur everything out up there so that our eyes are kind of drawn down into the car. Not a lot else we're going to do with that one. 
then we're going to get another gradient slider on the bottom and this is really where we're going to darken things out because we want our eyes to be drawn into the car so we're going to drop the exposure on the road I'm going to drop the contrast um, either I'm trying to work out whether I should yeah, I'm going to make the road a slightly colder blue and then I'm going to drop the saturation drop the sharpness put some noise reduction in um, and then drop the highlights and the shadows a bit more okay so you like this awesome so if I now do a before and after you can see kind of how this image has changed kind of looking back at it actually I think I'm going to come on to this and just drop the shadows a little bit more just to make the image a little bit darker. I don't actually want to see all the detail on the bottom of the car. I think it looks better with more contrast. So this is a very basic edit so far. There's not really much colour grading we can do with this image, but the lighting is very soft so we can kind of work on the lighting, which is quite good fun. Now the tone curve I think is really where this image is going to come to life. So we're going to work on adding in some contrast with this slider. I really want to crush these blacks just because I think it's going to make a really cool image. I want it to be slightly aggressive color grade just because the car is quite an aggressive car. Um, I want it to be quite a powerful image. Now, you can, if you want to, add some fade in this image, which could work, but I think it might just remove some of the detail in this car. I'm just testing it out now. I'm going to add a tiny bit of fade. I'm going to brighten up those shadows a little bit there. Then we're going to work on the mid-tones, we're going to brighten up the mid-tones like this. And you can see how this really kind of begins to bring some life to the image. If I turn off the tone curve, you can see the difference is made. I'm just adding in a load of contrast with this S curve we've created. The other thing we can do is add some uh, fade to the highlights, which kind of makes them more grey. And again, I'm just really focusing my edit on the car here. So we're going to close the tone curve close the HSL and then come down to camera calibration which is where we can go for maybe a sort of teal and orange color grade which see what that does to the car I think it's just making everything a bit too orange to be honest I'm not really liking the look of that and realistically here all we're doing is just playing around and seeing what sort of looks good with this image so that is the before that's the after let me know what you guys think of this edit okay so we're almost done one last thing I'm thinking is I'm actually going to come in I'm going to crop this image I'm going to Focus more on the car. Let's see if we can just unlock that. I think really where this image comes into life is with the car, and any of that background to the other side of the car I think is slightly distracting. So we're just going to try and find a good composition for that car, like that. I think and there we go. That's the image. So this is the before and that's the after. So I really think this image is an awesome image to practice with. It's quite hard because there aren't really many colors to work with, but I think we've gone for that sort of sunset vibe, uh, and I think it really comes into play when you start that crop on the image. Now Okay, so we're now going to jump into this photo here. Now, this one I'm really excited with, but I'm also a bit worried about. Now, the reason I'm excited with is the lighting, I think, is very good. You can see here, when we look at the histogram, there's a lot of detail still in the image. We can pull out a lot of detail from this. You can see if we just raise the shadows, you can see a lot in the shadows, and obviously the highlights, they're all there. The only issue I do have is there's not much interest in the sky, um, and it's going to be a little bit tricky to pull out some interesting colours. It would be awesome with this photo if you had a great pink sky, but that doesn't mean we can't make this image into something awesome. So, first things first is just working out the colour balance. I think we're going to warm it up. Actually, you know, we're just going to leave that where it is at the moment, because I don't know quite what colours we're going to be able to pull out of this. Um, I'm going to add some contrast to this image. I'm going to brighten it up slightly, like this, with the exposure. And we're trying to work out exactly where we want it to be. Now, it's, it's a sunset vibe photo, so I am trying to bring out some detail in that background. I'm then going to drop those highlights just a bit, boost the whites, drop the blacks. Now, if you do watch a lot of our color grades, you will notice I do that an awful lot, just because I really like the sort of contrasty effect. This is obviously just, I'm not telling you this is how you should edit the photos, but this is how I would go ahead and edit the photos. Okay, then clarity, I think... I think I'm going to leave clarity low, maybe drop it off ever so slightly, then I can come in with a brush tool and do clarity if I want. The other thing is vibrance, I'm going to boost the vibrance, and then the saturation I'm going to boost a bit as well. That's because I'm trying to go for that cool sunset vibe. Now, if you look here, we've got a bit of vignetting going on because we've used a wide-angle lens in this photo. Let's just have a look. This artist, uh, Ben Zawilski, 
he used a 38 millimeter. So that's why we've got this vignetting going on up here. So what we're going to do is crop that out. I don't really want that. I think the focus of the image is actually down here at the bottom. So we're going to crop that out there and then look at removing some of the sky. So I'm just looking at this image here. I don't think we need all the sky. If there was a very interesting sky, I would keep more of that sky in. Um, and I'm trying to work out with this image here. The other thing is I've just noticed is we are going to try and flatten out this horizon line. No, no, I can't. <laughs> Never mind. That'll be fine. So that's uh, before and after of our current color grade. Now, you would actually want to drop this into Photoshop just to remove these people. We might have a go at doing that within Lightroom, but let's just get on to the HSL sliders. So first thing I'm going to do is work on the hues. I'm going to make the skies a little bit more pink. I think magenta looks really cool in these images, so we're going to work on dropping the uh, uh, red. And the orange, I think, is going to make it more purple. If we go to the right, it's going to make it green. So we're going to go for the more pink, purple, sunset vibe of this photo. With the yellows, we're not going to have much different scene there. Okay, so then for the blues. Now, I don't want to make it too aqua. Sorry, too teal, because that's going to look unnatural in the sea. Um, again, if I go to the right, it makes it more purple. Now, because we're going for sunset, I'm going to add some purple into the sea, and then I'm going to counteract that with dropping the aquas, just to kind of keep a little bit of that teal blue color in the sea. Then the magentas and purples, just going to mess around with. I'm going to drop the purples to the left because although we are at sunset time, the light is actually getting colder because it is night time. So you kind of need to think about what time of day your image is taken at. You want to decide really what sort of colors you would be seeing in that image. Because when you take the photo, you're not actually capturing those exact colors that your eyes are seeing. So you just want to work out exactly what it is we're looking at. Now, I'm focusing most of my time here because this is where I think the you've got this nice leading line along the water to the bridge. So this is really where our attention is drawn here. The rocks here we can work on, but I might darken those in just a bit as well. Now, the other thing is the saturation. Now, this is the Golden Gate Bridge, so I do want to brighten up this bridge here and draw our eyes towards the bridge. So we are going to boost the luminance in the reds and the oranges. That will draw our eyes to the center of the image a bit more. I want it to be more saturated. That is the focus of the image. You see if I go too far it just looks ridiculous. So we just want to have a tiny amount of saturation in there. Then we're going to drop the purples a little bit and then probably drop the blues as well. So that's the saturation kind of worked with. Then the luminance, I like to brighten up the sea a little bit because if I go too dark, you're adding too much contrast and your eyes aren't really drawn in. So brighten up the blues. I'm going to drop the aquas for a bit of color contrast and I think that will do for the HSL slider. So you see if I turn off the HSL, the difference is made. I've just added in more purples really. It's quite a subtle edit. Um, now we can use the split turning if we want. So if you press Option or Alt on your keyboard, you can drag the slider along. And I'm just trying to work out what colors I want in the sky. I'm thinking potentially a purple, but we'll see what it looks like. Like that. And then in the shadows. So what I've done here is I've gone for a sort of teal color in the shadows, just because I think it adds a bit more interest to the image. I don't want everything to be too pink. So we've got pink in the skies uh, and highlights, and we've got teals in the shadows. Then we can come down to calibration and we can potentially work on the colors a bit more here. So if I drag it to the left, you can see we add more pink. If I drag it to the right, it's a bit more orange. So I'm going to go for a bit more orange in the green primary. I don't think we're going to see much change. Maybe a bit of pink. Yeah. Leave the green primary alone, I think. And then the blue primary, if I go left, it's going to add some more teal. If I go right, it's going to look a bit funky. So we're going to add in a bit more teal. And what this is going to do is try and make the image look a bit more realistic. So We'll see what effect that's made to the image. Very faint, but we'll leave it like that. Now the next thing is the tone curve, where I'm gonna add in some contrast. I'm gonna boost those highlights. We're gonna drop those shadows like that. And this is really where we're gonna kind of see the sunset vibes coming in. We have those dark shadows and those big contrasty vibes. Um, and then we're gonna drop, actually it's a little bit of fade. And I think soften up the image like that. And then we're going to drop those highlights there and fade off the highlights. Maybe brighten up this center bit of the image. Okay, that's it with the tone curve. The next thing is this uh, gradient slider. Now I want to just drag it in from the side like this. And the plan here is to just take away some of this contrast. It's quite messy here and darken it up a little bit. So we're going to drop the contrast. 
we're going to desaturate it slightly. The idea here is because we've got these very tightly packed rocks, I really want our eyes to be drawn to this part of the image. So another thing you could potentially do if you wanted to is just crop out this right hand side of the image just because that part there is the more interesting part of the image. Uh, yeah, I think that's a much better composition. So this is the before, this is the after of our edit. Um, and really, I think that's all that we need to do with this image. One thing we could do is darken up the top of the sky if you really wanted to, but I don't think it's going to look too good. I'm just going to do it just so you can see what it would look like and then darken up the front of the image. And the idea of this is just to kind of draw our eyes into the image. Now, some would say this is a slightly over-edited image, but with sunsets, you can really mess around and do lots of different things. And here I'm just kind of working on the exposure. So that's the before and that's the after. Let me know what you think of this image. I personally love this edit. It's quite a subtle color grade, but at the same time, it does bring out a lot of colors. Um, I'm actually just going to zoom in and try and get rid of this man here using the healing tool. So we'll see what we can do. I'm just going to do it very quickly and just see what Lightroom can do. So. So this is the uh, Golden Gate Bridge edit and this is the car edit. Two very different edits. Personally, I think the bridge has turned out a bit better. This one, I think I would actually redo. I would make it a little bit less orange. I'd probably get rid of this flare and lighten it up a bit more. But there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are interested in submitting your own photos, send them into the email down below. If you're interested in learning how to edit more or if you're trying to become more professional in your photography, um, I have put together the ultimate bundle of everything you're ever going to need. So in this bundle, you're going to have our advanced Lightroom training, which is going to go into a lot more detail than what we do in YouTube. It's going to break down why we do certain edits and how we do different edits. You're going to get access to all of our presets. That's all of our how to edit like presets. That's all going to be bundled together as well. You're going to get access to our mentorship sort of group uh, where you're going to get live calls. You're going to chat with us personally and then you're going to get access to our practice raw files so you can go ahead and use those while watching the course learning from us uh, using our raw files and testing different edits um, plus god knows what else loads of other things so if you are interested in this click the link down below it will be the top link in the description it's a monthly subscription so $9.95 every single month and you get access to all of this stuff and you get to keep it now usually we sell this for like 10 times the price so that's why it's reduced that's why it's a monthly subscription now you don't have to go and buy it obviously of course don't go ahead and buy it if you don't want it uh, it just helps support the channel if you grab it and you keep on that subscription it just means we can continue producing videos like this so that's something that is now on offer i wanted to make it very obvious to you guys that it is a monthly subscription so click that link down below and grab that if that's something you're interested in now it's a lot cheaper than it usually is so that's why um but yeah we'll see you in the next video live long and prosper